Today we're going to cover how to properly conduct a pre-operation inspection on the D155AX-8 dozer. Now the reason we do the inspection is to just take a quick look at the machine and inspect it for any damage, excessive wear, or any leaks. Getting in the habit of doing this inspection will go a long way towards maximizing the production and the longevity of the machine. With that, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so as we approach the machine, we have a couple checks we can do right away. The first one would be to look up in the cab and just ensure that there's nobody inside. Move our way down to the lights into the grill and just make sure there's no obvious signs of damage. From there, we'll go ahead and start at our work equipment, work our way around the machine. With the blade, what we're looking to check for is all of our welds, cutting edges and corner bits, just to make sure there's no signs of excessive wear and also ensuring that the bolts are in place. From here, we can go ahead and swing around to the back side of the blade. What we're doing here is checking the back side of the blade, looking at all of our welds, and also our mounting points for the arms and the cylinders. We want to make sure that the pins and bolts are in place and everything's receiving the proper amount of lubrication. Also, a really good opportunity to take a look under the front side of the machine and just make sure you don't see any signs of leaks. From here, we can go ahead and look at our hydraulic piping and our hydraulic lines. So we'll just continue our way across the push arm until we get to the final mounting spot. If everything looks okay there, we can take a step back now and do our undercarriage inspection. What we want to do is just visually take a look at the idler, the shoes, the carrier rollers, the final drive and sprocket, work our way down to the track guides, the K-bogies, and the pivot shaft. If everything looks okay here, go ahead and take a look at our sight glass and make sure we have adequate levels of hydraulic fluid. Then we can continue to work our way around the machine. Go ahead and take a look at all of our mounting points. Then we'll move up to the rear view camera and just work our way down. So looking at the back side of the cab and all of our lights. From here, we can move to the ripper assembly itself, where we're going to be checking all the mounting points for the arms and the cylinders, making sure that all the bolts and pins are in place and everything's receiving the proper amount of lubrication. We can actually do that check on both sides of the ripper assembly. On our way over to the other side, we can get down and take a look at the shank and the ripper tooth, make sure that there's no signs of excessive wear. It's also a really good opportunity to take a look underneath the machine and see if there's any leaks. As we work our way back towards the machine, make sure we're checking the hydraulic lines and also checking the ripper light. It's also location of the sediment drain for the fuel tank and the main fuel cutoff switch. All right, so moving around to the left side of the machine, we'll be again checking our mounting points. And go ahead and open the door and take a look at our batteries and our breakers, just making sure we don't see any obvious signs of corrosion or any kind of damage. This is also the location for the main battery disconnect switch, and you can also check your windshield wiper fluid. From there, we'll go ahead and do the same visual inspection of the undercarriage that we performed on the other side of the machine. One thing to note, though, is that keeping the undercarriage clean can help with the inspection process and can also help with the longevity of the undercarriage. Move along to the push arms and cylinders, checking all the mounting points. Perform the same visual inspection that we did on the other side of the machine. If everything looks good here, that would conclude the ground level checks, and we can move on to the second level checks. So after completing the ground level inspection, the next step would be to access the machine to do our second level checks. Before we do that, we're going to inspect our access points to make sure they're okay and make sure that we're always using proper mounting and dismounting techniques whenever we access the machine. So once you've accessed the machine, we can go ahead and open the doors and do our visual inspection of the engine compartment. So what we're doing here is just scanning across to just check everything, make sure that there aren't any signs of leaks, that all the connections look good, and that there's no debris. If everything looks good here, we can move down and check our engine coolant and make sure we have adequate fluid levels. So as we finish up here and move towards the cab, it's a good idea to inspect the cab itself. Just take a look at the windows, the windshield wipers, and your lights. Just make sure nothing jumps out at you. Moving up to the top of the machine, got the location of the fuel fill spot. These machines utilize ultra-low sulfur diesel. You also have your hydraulic and transmission fluid fill spots. You want to inspect your breather vents, make sure that they're in place. And finally, you have the transmission fluid check spot. So once we're finished on this side, if everything checks out, we can move to the other side of the machine and finish our inspection. Okay, so now that we've accessed the left side of the machine, once we get the doors open, we can continue with our visual inspection of the engine compartment. And like we did on the other side, all we're really looking for is just to make sure that the connections are okay, there's no leaks and there's no debris. From here, we can move to our air filter and just take a look at our latches, make sure they're in place. You also have the location of your air restriction gauge. From here, we can move to the engine oil check spot. And our dampener fluid check spot. The last thing we'll do before we close the doors is take a quick look at our fuel pre-filter and just make sure that there's no contamination. From here, we'll go ahead and work our way towards the cab. 
So now that we finished the engine inspection, we can go ahead and move to our final compartment, which is the location of the DEF tank, which you can tell by the blue cap. You also can check the DEF level in the sight tube. We also have the location of the DEF tank breather, make sure that's in place, and also the location of the exterior cab filter. Finally, before we enter the cab, we just want to take a quick look at our wipers, our lights, and our windows, and just make sure that there's no damage. If everything looks okay, that would conclude the pre-operation inspection, and we can go operate. Mm -hmm.